All right. Time to take another crack at this video. I'm not sure what happened before. Well, I'm pretty sure that it just screwed up really. So anyway, this is how to edit the old photo. And we're going to be using basically three different tools are more like two different tools. And again, I want to review this for you. So the uh, first tool we're going to be using or one of the tools is the spot healing brush. So if you click and hold, you can see the other tools under there, but I would stick with spot healing for now. And when you have a brush open, you have the settings up here that you can change, change the size, change the hardness, make it softer. If you see, if you change the brush to a harder edge, you can see it up here in a preview. So you can make a softer brush. As far as changing the size goes, I like doing that on the keyboard. And on the keyboard, you have the bracket keys, which is right under the plus and equal uh, key. So you push the uh, left bracket key to make it smaller and the right one to make it larger. So spot healing, all you have to do basically is find an area and get the brush large enough and just click. Now, be careful about using a large brush like I'm doing right now on some areas because it will accidentally fix things that you don't want it to fix. You can see how I missed some on here. But let me just talk about this tool a little bit more. Um, I'm going to zoom in with the zoom tool. This is very effective on this assignment. And when you're doing something like this, especially something where you have a line, you want to make the brush just a little larger than the area that you're going to fix. It has to be larger so that the uh, computer can pick up uh, the, the pixels on either side of the line, or Photoshop can pick it up, rather. And then you can just click and drag. And as long as you didn't change the settings uh, incorrectly or set the settings incorrectly, it'll work pretty well. You can try painting areas like this by just dragging, dragging the thing around. But be careful, guys. Watch for patterns. Like, if you do it wrong, you're going to create a pattern all the way down the image. And people do that when they get into too much of a hurry. All right. The other one you're going to use more often than not is the clone stamp tool. It looks like a rubber stamp. And the same applies here in terms of using the, uh, the brush feature. And of course, you can change the size and everything up here and change the hardness or softness. Or, well, you can change the hardness or softness up here, but the size you can do with the, um, the bracket piece. So I'm going to show you again how to take out difficult areas with the clone stamp tool. And nothing is guaranteed to work correctly. There are subtle little changes that you might make in your brush size or whatever that might not make something work that worked before. So it all depends on the situation and the photo and everything else. So, but what I want to do is fix this area here. But the healing brush tool does not work well for that. So I'm going to use the clone stamp tool and I'm going to make my brush larger than the area I want to fix. And it needs to see the gray and the black area in order to help fix this. So I'm going to put it right here. This is the area I'm going to copy because all the clone stamp tool does is it copies and pastes. If I push Alt, you're going to see something that looks like a target and you click there. Now you let go of Alt and now I've copied that area. So we're more, we're less concerned about the white dot right now than we are about getting the jacket lined up without the white dot. So that worked well. Then I could go back and use the, the spot healing brush tool to fix this area. And you might have to go in and use the clone stamp tool again, or you might have to change the size and make it more precise, but that looks pretty good right there. So, um, and I have also found for the tie to work, the spot healing brush works pretty well. So what I do on that is I make my brush kind of small. Let me zoom in. So, of course, the more I zoom in, the more you're going to see the flaws. But let me go back to that spot healing brush. And I'm going to make the brush smaller as well. 
And so what I'm going to do is just click and drag the mouse over the white areas of the tie. Those are actually imperfections uh, in their photo. So what I'm doing, guys, is just kind of trying to paint it back in. So when you go to paint this, pick up some of the dark areas and see if it will move those areas over to fix the tie. And that actually, when you zoom out, it's going to look really nice. So you have the clone stamp tool and you have the spot healing brush tool. Now I want to show you one more, but it may not be as effective. And uh, for those of you who saw me demonstrate, which might have been all of you, it didn't work as well, but it works really well on some photos. So this is called content aware, but you're not going to see it on the toolbar, but you can select something. I'm going to use the, the freehand drawing tool, which is the lasso tool. So I'm just going to see what happens if I circle this area right here. I select the area that I want to change and I hit backspace. Then I look for the fill uh, dialog box. Content aware should be selected. Normal uh, blending mode, which you'll learn about later, and opacity at 100%. Let's see what happens. So all you have to do is click off that and you've got it. But be careful when you're doing this because so many of my students have messed up because they try to get into too much of a hurry on the healing brush or the clone stamp tool and they just keep dragging the mouse along and all of a sudden you've got this weird pattern going on. So some problem areas you're going to have, of course, will be the ear, the tie, and then over here on the jacket and the hair. So that is how you do it. Those are the three tools you need to use. And remember, do this. If you're getting impatient or you're getting tired, you need a snack or whatever, I would suggest saving your progress before you're finished. So you can do File, Save As. And then, well, I wouldn't save it to here, but these were the documents I was sharing today. So it was called Old Image. Or you could change the name to Photo Repair. I would call this Old Image in Progress. And now, once you save it that way, when you, you won't lose the original, you'll save all of your, uh, but you'll save all of your work that you've done so far. And then you can close it and then come back later and open it up and continue on.